What else we got today, Conrad? All right, we have a lot of news. So we're going to go through a lot of news items fairly quickly. We're going to go back to talk about local service ads, specifically my take on branded. And Guy is going to give you some best practices for running local service ads, including, I believe, a KPI. And finally, hold on to your hats, SEO people. SEO is dead again. Google confirms links are not important. That either ends with an exclamation mark or a question mark. You'll have to stay tuned to find out. Lockwood, hit it. Money makes a go round. And welcome to Lunch Hour Legal Marketing. Teaching you how to promote, market, and make fat stacks for your legal practice. Here on Legal Talk Network. All right, welcome to Lunch Hour Legal Marketing. We have a heavy packed news segment for you to listen to. And I see we've gone back to the modern news audio drop instead of the classic. Wonder what she liked better. Anyway, we've got a lot of news to get through, starting with Guy Google just had their Q1 earning call. What? did they share and what does this tell us about the future of legal marketing? Well, I want to give a shout out to uh, Near Media. If you're not subscribed to Near, Near Media's coverage, I think you're missing out. There's a lot of great local SMB stuff pertinent to law firms uh, there. And they covered the um, earnings call and they, they called out a big thing that I think was probably thematic. And, you know, some of this is, of course, PR, but uh, their CEO, Google CEO, confirms that they are seeing early confirmation of their thesis that SGE is expanding the universe of queries, and they're seeing an increase in search usage among people who use the AI overviews. And so what does this all mean for you? You know, one, you better be trying to track what's going on with query, search engine results relevant to your practice in the context of both SGE and Gemini. Um, and I, this is this is one of those, like, um, I'm probably going to uh, botch this um, saying, but the frog in the boiling pot. And they're, you're, you're not, you're, they're saying it's not going to be this light switch moment. They've already tested it across billions of queries. It's here. It's just you might not be seeing it right now. So anyway... And of course, they're they're still making a lot of money from ads and YouTube. So that's a side note. All right. So SGE, we we talked a little bit a couple of episodes ago about how it hasn't really come in and blown us away. You're suggesting this is more of a dip dip your toe in the water, Google, and 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 slowly get into the deep end. I I think so. I I okay. And and it's not just in organic. It's the the their usage of AI in their ad products. I just I think that you know I I don't want to be part of the AI hype cycle, but I do think that there's going to be some surprises for lawyers who are you know have been playing the SEO game, especially in local for a long time, and and the impact that SG might have on that. So anyway, check out the near media article on this. I think it's it's good. They talk sources and where they're uh, some of these places they're getting uh, SGE data. All right. Speaking of Google, Search Engine Journal article came out, and we're going to make this the, the, the coverage of our second segment. Google confirms links are not that important. We'll come back to whether or not we think this is news or otherwise later in the episode. Um, Google also finished their core algo update. There's been a lot of conversation about the Google core algorithm update being fairly seismic. Um, that finished on April 19th, uh, more than a week from our date of recording. So uh, note that any turbulence from the core algorithm update should have settled down by now. Um, and speaking of Google, one more last Google News item. I thought this was kind of interesting. Google is testing QR codes on LSAs, basically showcasing a 
QR code that will then activate a phone call off of your phone. It reminds me of my mom taking pictures of a monitor to send me a picture of what's going on on her computer. But we will be seeing QR codes in the LSAs. Uh, if you see one, would love to have a. I've seen them outside of legal. If you see one in legal, uh, take a screen grab, <laughs> not with your camera, um, not with your phone, and uh, send it to us. Hey, Guy, do you remember that old Microsoft thing called Bing and Microsoft Ads? You remember that? I do. Still around? Yeah. Yes. Still around. They are sunsetting. Actually, yesterday, sorry, we're recording on May 1st. Yesterday, they sunsetted the manual bidding that you could do on your CPC campaigns uh, through Microsoft Ads. So that What's that mean? That means you can't do that anymore. It is no longer a thing. You cannot manually Like I control. cannot manually update bids for That's my correct. ads on Bing. So for all of you who were spending a lot of time manually updating your ads on Bing's, for all one of you who was doing that, uh, it's gone. <laughs> and uh, Guy, you are our regulatory expert here. You're always making yeah. sure that we keep people abreast of things to keep them licensed. FTC rules about reviews and followers. Tell me about this. Well, this is this is an old news that we discussed that we feel like really isn't getting enough coverage. And I and I would love to hear. I you know, people ask me all the time, "What are we supposed to do about this fake review problem? Who's sorting this out?" And I'm like, "Google's not." Um, you know, the the state bars aren't. Um, maybe state AG office, but if the, there's an FTC rule that's floating out there, they had a, a hearing on it on February 13th. And, um, you know, if you look at it, if this go, if this goes through and I don't know what the status is and people that are more informed than me can feel free to let us know. We'd love to hear from you. But the rule bans selling or obtaining fake consumer reviews and testimonial bans review hijacking bans buying positive, negative reviews, um, there's a bunch of other of these. I'm not going to call them all out. Um, selling fake social media indicators. So th that's that's a that's kind of a new part of the conversation that we've had on this. They pod, list uh, they list like fake followers, fake views, um, okay. and the proposed rule also bars anyone from buying such indicators to misrepresent the importance for a commercial purpose. Okay. What's wow. Can you read that again, please? The proposed rule also would bar anyone from buying such indicators to misrepresent their importance for a commercial purpose. Well, boy, oh boy, are there a bunch of digital marketing agencies in a world of trouble, not to mention their clients. Um, yeah. Lawyers. Me I mean, I know this. lawyers doing this stuff. So you're a lawyer. You've been buying <laughs> your followers. I can't imagine you would. Um. <laughs> What what do you do right now, Guy? Can you unbuy those followers? Is there the dis follower disavowal? Close, like you can what close do you do? your account, delete your close account. Close your account? Delete your account. I've spent so much money getting all these people from Thailand following me, dude. I mean, this could be a big one. Could send some aftershocks. But, you know, again, people will say, oh, Gee, you always say this stuff and the regulatory bodies don't ever do anything. And they're right. Well, that's what I was going to so, say, right? So, like, we've been yep. hearing this crap forever. We, we've we talked yep. about um, John Henson, uh, who follows this stuff really, really carefully. He is a great person to follow if you're interested in staying really abreast of this stuff. And yet there's kind of a wait and see. Like, what's, you know, very pragmatically, what do you think about this? I, th I think... Someone's gonna. I think it's gonna be like how the IRS audits tax returns. You know, okay. they're gonna only audit like two percent of them, but when they get you, they're gonna make a big fuss about it. And okay. so somebody is going to get the hammer dropped on them. The hammer dropped on them. Are you making any illusions? No, no, no. no, no okay. I am not. No. Someone okay. is going to get the some other one of the large, top an anvil an anvil an anvil okay i'm unfamiliar is there an anvil? with the <laughs> anvil in a market i do believe there I, is the te uh, i don't I'm know not, the texas I'm not anvil making, i'm not i'm not making that connection at all <laughs> okay i was okay. just using hammer more like you know the traditional sense like it's a bit of a dog hammer. eat dog world isn't it key yeah it's a 
the big dogs are coming. I don't, you know, I don't know. Okay. Anyway, so I think that'll be interesting to see. And, um, you know, again, people will say, well, and we've probably gone longer on this than Adam wants us to, but, um, you know, someone that gets made an example of this, it's going to hurt and it's going to hurt. I think it's going to hurt pretty badly. So anyway, I, at the risk of saying the obvious, don't buy fake reviews. Or followers. That's the part that I don't think we've really, we haven't talked about that much. And I don't think a lot of people are. And I don't think a lot of people think there's a lot of harm in it. And yet, that means they know it's not right. They know it's not right. Well, they know it's not right. That's the do the right thing principle that a lot of people struggle with. Uh, What would Atticus do? That's one of our core values. What would Atticus do? He would not be buying followers. Okay. Two events coming up. Guy, I want you to promote. From the pod, the Law Firm Growth Summit, and local you that you're coasting with, Giant Hawkins, in Detroit. Yeah, Law Firm Growth Summit. Uh, we are both participating in that. And that is a virtual summit. And that is going on May tw- whoa, May 21st through 23rd. Sorry. Law Firm Growth Summit automatically plays some very intense music when you land on their site. <laughs> which by the way from a web design standpoint is not is a good user garbage. experience oh, we not should, a great we user could, experience maybe we should do an seo audit of lawfirmgrowthsummit.com the second event that i am super proud to be participating in um and and trying to get conrad to come to as well even i'm sending reluctant. one of my people which is Does, great he, we're grateful for that um geez. is uh local you where uh we will be talking Links and SGE, Greg Gifford's going to be there. Joy Hawkins is going to be there. We're going to have fun. The Tigers are in town, so hopefully we'll catch a ball game. Um, Come to Local U. All right. Local SEO. So very bluntly, there's a lot of conferences you can go to. Um, There are. Getting a chance to to listen. (laughs) Don't go to those. Uh, (laughs) Getting a chance to listen to Joy uh, and Gifford and Gee. It's a good one. It is good. pragmatic, relevant. Joy's, Joy's local. doing a talk on whether or not links impact the local pack and studies, anecdotal studies. You know, well, she wouldn't call them anecdotal, but st- uh, data driven studies on the imp- <laughs> on how you measure the impact of links in local. So that's gonna. I'm looking forward to that one. Um. Yeah. So okay, we're gonna move on. We're gonna talk about local service ads. But first, Guy's gonna say a few things about YouTube. And how we love seeing you there, and that you should like and subscribe, and and leave a comment. We're not hearing enough from you. And uh, check out the Lawyer's Guide to Conversions and Listener LSA Queries for some examples of awesome questions and inside tips on LSAs that we're going to expand upon today. All right, Guy. This next segment we keep bringing up, maybe beating the dead horse, but I I personally can't believe that it's not getting more coverage, and that is the auto enrolling of all of the clients of local service ads into their branded queries. Guy, can you tell the audience really quickly what this is and why we are annoyed about it? Well, you just did. And we've also did talk about this on a prior episode, but the short version is, is that you're probably buying leads for searches on your name if you've got local service ads, brands enabled. Uh, and especially true if you, you know, get a lot of brand queries, right? If you get if you get a disproportionate number of uh, brand LSA leads to non-brand, that's a pricey fee to be paying for people who are looking for you anyway. And my big problem with these was the opacity in terms of which of those phone calls are you paying for that are branded queries and which are non-branded queries? Um, in pay-per-click, you can separate those two things out. And how much are you paying for those things? And when we talked about this initially, when we announced this initially, Guy's response was that he had opted his clients out of, of this. And my response was, we don't know. And we're going to try and wait and see. And so we've had, I don't know, six weeks of, of, of experience with this six weeks of 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 data to try and collect we've got six weeks of winning six weeks of burning your kids college fund 
in Mountain View, as it turns out. So I want to give you um, a couple of anecdotes. Uh, we don't really, it's really hard to analyze this because the, 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 the access to data is very, very limited. And so we've looked at this in a couple of ways. Uh, we looked at, was there a change in the refund rate? If you had this on or if you or when you turned it off, did it fundamentally change your refund rate? And the theory behind that is if you um, are getting a brand query, you can't really uh, suggest that that was not a relevant search. So you can you can uh, dispute that. But if they're looking for Smith and Jones and you're Smith and Jones, it's it's not really disputable. And so did the refund rate fundamentally? I don't know about that. You can oh, okay. you can dispute based on practice area. You, you, right, but if someone's calling Smith and Jones and you do family law, they're probably yeah, but your but your but but in the LSA platform, if your practice is not set to those other practice areas, you can dispute those. Oh, if it is uh, sure, if if, it I, is, if I call Conrad and I'm like, hey, Conrad, uh, do you do divorce law? And they're and you're like, no, I do PI law. You can dispute that. No, no, but if you call, sure, totally, a hundred percent. But if you call and say, I'd like to talk to Mr. Smith because I did a query for Smith and Jones, that's going to be very difficult to dispute. You right? gotta get them to you gotta get them to a point where it's like we are not uh they're they're not it's out of category. A hundred percent. But my point being there's a fundamental it's, shift yeah, in the data okay. pattern when you start doing branded queries and people are calling you and and all of a sudden the, the overall behavior of people running branded queries, you're not going to be able to dispute that at a similar rate, at the same rate as you were the other calls. I hear you. I'm a little bit suspicious, but go ahead. What'd you find? Well, what we did find is that there was, and again, this is, this is anecdotes, not data. So there's no statistical significance in this, but we did find that in cases where a, there was a very strong brand awareness, so a, a, a firm of ours that had a very strong offline presence, lots of TV advertising, lots of billboard advertising, et cetera, their dispute rate actually did change dramatically. Um, when you opted them out of brand. When you ch when you made the change, right? The whole point is like, mm -hmm. is there a difference? Because without the data, the only thing that you can actually change and look at differently is make opt in or opt out and then compare those two date ranges because there's nothing right. else to look at, which is so unbelievably frustrating. You, you could, here's another thing idea and again this isn't much science here but you can okay. go look at um purport if you're is, is this is this firm also running traditional ads what in comparison to running ppc in comparison to LSA, yeah so you compare lsa data to yeah. paid search data to search console data right and segment each of those by brand non-brand and you'll see a trend between like you know look what per the, the percentages you'll you'll find a window of like that percentage is probably carrying to LSAs too if assuming right. you've got enough impression share right so, so what you're doing is extrapolating your pay per click branded versus non branded queries into the, the problem is the the biggest problem is is that if you don't have high impression share it's probably skewing disproportionately on brand right yes. So anyway, it, it's, so it, well, this is the problem. You don't know. Like the, it right. really comes out to you and I can sit here and kind of theorize as to what's the, what the makeup is. What it, I mean, you could be super cynical and say it's only showing up for branded queries and they're just overcharging you for that. Right now, here's a question um, for you. Did okay. your anecdotes uh, show anything about um, impact on impression share after you turned the brand off? Well, like, so that's, so the, 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 the question, so it doesn't show the impression share, like you don't really have a feel for impression share within the LSAs, but what you can look at is the overall spend when you turn it on or off, right? So what you're trying to determine right. is how much of my spend is going towards branded versus non-branded. We'll turn it off. Does the spend dramatically right. change? What did that and, show? what did you see on so that? We did when we ran that and again, anecdotes and, and so these anecdotes are going to be influenced by the marketing strategy of the individual firms. But uh, across our, our clients, across the ones that we looked at, we saw a change of between 37 and 55% in, in the overall spend when, when you cost. turned up in, in cost, right? So that's not an insignificant amount, which means that you are probably spending a lot of your money on these branded queries. I did talk 
to another firm, big spender, both offline and online, big spender on LSAs. They ran their own numbers and their their perspective was they were paying about 60 to 70% um, per call of what they, and this is a PI firm, of what they would pay for a head term, right? Car accident, lawyer, San Francisco. They were paying 60 to 70% um, of that for their brand queries, which turned out to be like 150 to $200 per, per query. So to me, my read is, if these things are true, this is a really expensive way to spend money on your brand. And it's Google it might doing be, your- It might be. Th- this is my view of it. Th- and those are, that's okay. all. Those are really good insights. And I think that's a, a good way to look at it. I would take LSA as a, a, a channel in and of itself. Okay. And, 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 and even using your, what you think brand is contributing to the spend. Okay. See whether or not it's profitable for you, because the question you're talking is, about the big is that, average. Is it worth paying the premium on your brand in order to capture the market share that's using LSAs for non-brand? And my hunch is, is that if you're a big player, coming. well, I'm, 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 my hunch is, is that if you're a big player, you you got to have LSAs on. You're just losing. You're you're incrementally cutting yourself out of a significant part of the market by having LSAs okay. off. Okay. And, 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 and let me take it one step further. My other hunch is, is that, um, having brand on is, is having a positive impact on your non-brand visibility. In LSAs. Yes. Okay. So can you say that? So I told you, I felt a cynic coming. Can you say that again? And, and which rationalizes your big average. Go ahead. Say it again. Cause well, I, I, I think this I, is really so, important. So, what I was, my hunch, and I, this is totally anecdotal, but that opting out of brand on LSAs is having a negative impact on your search impression share for non brand. You're never going to be able to tell. Well, you could try and validate that. You're going to, you're the best you're going to do. You already talked about if you, when you, you can measure the turning the on and the turning the off. That's right. Um, That's the best you can do. But, but you don't know. You know, so you're, so you're like, okay, before we've got, this is with brand on, this is with brand off. Um, but you don't, you're not controlling for all the other things. Right. And, and, and your, you know, the, the, your share of impressions, they're not reporting on brand. They're not segmenting impression share by brand, non-brand. Right. They're not segmenting by anything. But, but again, to me, this is very simple. How does Google make money? Google makes more money when your brand is on. Google's all of Google's machines are designed to make Google more money. Why would it why would it be any different in LSAs? So, if you're a firm that is you know, if you're calculating um booked lead per impression, you know, as a an uh, as a um comparison to, you know, conversion rate on ads, right? Pixel fires on ads. Why would you think that Google wouldn't show your ads more often, even for non-brand? So they're getting paid on leads. Lead, you're arguing lead, on leads the big per average, impression. Right? Leads per impression is their is that's their magic number. And I think my problem, and I'm not, I'm not necessarily disagreeing with you. My, my philosophical problem with this is finding waste in pay-per-click is the way to make pay-per-click work well. Finding those little things. What are the hundred things that we can cut out of our spend so that we are really, really amazingly targeted and we're only spending on the things that are going to actually drive our business, right? What, what are those things? Uh, I think short term. Make your money while the making money is good. If you okay. if your if your LSAs all in are net profitable for you, you're you know you're this isn't the only place you're spending money. This isn't your sole ad budget, and you look at it and you're like uh, and and for sure if you don't have a lot of brand, you know if you're not a lot of brand traffic, I would be I would just opt into it. I'd be like I'm paying a premium on some brand queries. I'm going to measure whether this is actually generating a return. It's, you know, in the window that I need to make for them to be profitable for me. I'd have messages on. I'd have messages auto-answered by a virtual receptionist 24 hours a day within seconds. 
I would have the same thing for calls. I and I would be booking those appointments. You know, book everything in the platform. Book everything in platform. Who cares? Doesn't matter. Maximize Google's good fortune and make sure that it's profitable for you while your cost per acquisition is still within your target. Okay. So what you what you the, the caveat that you just put on this is make caveat. sure that it's make sure that it's profitable for you. Right. Okay. Now, you will remember, dear listener, the extent to which I hate the term ROI. And what Guy has just specifically suggested that you do is not minimize your ROI, but cut the cut the ROI down because you're you're happy enough with the cost per acquisition to take on the extra cost of what I would consider wasted money on uh, branded LSA queries, right? And and I think this comes down to an economic argument. I think there's two elements. One is the economic argument. Is this at a cost per case that it that makes sense or cost per consultation that makes sense for you? And if so, get the volume while the getting is good. Yep. I have a the thing that I hate about that is I hate seeing the waste in the system. And if you are Well, correct, you know, the other thing is you know at some point the economics aren't going to work. And you're right. It's an auction yeah. base. It's the same problem we have in PPC. That's true. Um, yeah, the, 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 and this is it's what happened to pay-per-click and it's what happened to LSA. You need to know the economics of does this work for you. My and, and to me, if those economics start to not work for you, that begs the either turn it off or at the very least cut the fat, which is the branded queries. If you're on the border of LSAs being too expensive, I would drop the brand queries because either you're losing unprofitable business, right? Or you're going to improve the ROI on that channel. I just said ROI and I meant it. You're going to improve the ROI on that channel by cutting some of the, the spend fat. Okay. And do, what, and do what Conrad recommends, which is test this stuff for yourself. Test it on your own data. Turn it off. See what happens. Turn it on. Turn it off. Be And, and check and, and, that impression share number over time. All right. Enough about LSAs. We're going to go to our next favorite topic. After the break, we're going to come back and dissect the Search Engine Journal article, which is getting a lot of play, by the way. Google confirms links are not that important. That is the headline coming to you on the other side of the ad. Hey, dear listeners. I know. I'm pretty, I don't know, but I'm pretty confident there are more than 39 of you listening to Lunch Hour Legal Marketing. And yet, only 39 of you have left us a review on Apple Podcasts. So, like, hate, or indifferent, I love those indifferent reviews, please do go drop a review on Apple Podcasts for Lunch Hour Legal Marketing. All right. Conrad, have you heard yes. the breaking news? I I got, I was emailed a bunch of times with this. They're like, oh, we're all done now. Google confirms links are not that important. According to Search Engine Journal, I had the good fortune of recording a webinar with our mutual friend, Joy Hawkins, on the day that this article dropped. And just coincidentally, maybe it was the day after, in fairness, but just coincidentally. You didn't, you didn't cancel your talk because this came out? Just, just, no, Joy was like, she was like, we couldn't have timed this any better. Um, coincidentally, we had a webinar on link building. And so, and, and I'm going to give a shout to Seth. Price um, SEO Insider podcast. We just talked about links on the SEO Insider podcast. You mean the death of and links, right, Guy? The death of links. And today we are going to continue piling on the death of links. Conrad, has Google confirmed that links are not that important? So if you were to take a little time to read beyond the headlines, you will realize. No one does that. <laughs> Clearly, no one does that. Otherwise, no one would be talking about this shit. Damn it! I was trying to yes! go PG all the way. Another R rating. I went e, thirty-nine I minutes. E ratings. It's pretty okay. Cool. So, if you read the article and look at the sources, 
I'm going to read what was used to confirm that links are not that important. This was heard by Patrick Stocks from Gary Isles. Gary is a Google guy, for those of you who don't know. Gary said, we need very few links to rank pages. Pages, okay. Over the years, we've made links less important. That was then, that's all, that's it. That's what this entire thing is based on. That translated into a headline that says Google confirms links are not that important. Um, Guy. And a sub and a subheading that says why Google doesn't need links. Can you, uh, is this, man. So I'm even going to, I'm going to give, I'm going to give everybody yeah, here yeah. a very judicious reading and say that maybe, maybe links mattered less in the overall signaling pie than they have in the past because Google has more signals than they've had in the past. So, you know, when links were one of the few signals they had, links made up a big part of the linking pie. However, not all slices of pie are created equally. So even though it might be less of the pie, it's still a pretty, in my experience, a pretty big piece of the pie. What about you? You think link, you got, you ranking sites without links, content only? Content only, baby. Just throw some H1s in there, get some chat GPT generated content, and that's SEO. Well, um, the other thing that I, this is another just observation that I always think is worth talking about. You know, you've got all of these updates going on and um, all the SEO communities angry as they always are when there's updates. And then you see some of the cert the actual results, not the people talking about it, not the snapshots of unmarked accesses from Search Console data and all these other third-party tools that track rankings. But when you actually go and just <laughs> hit enter on Google and you see sites like Forbes ranking for top personal injury lawyers and you're like, wait a minute, great content. This must let's click in and see what Forbes has got going on for great content for best personal injury lawyer. And the answer is they don't. And by the way, we can see you can uh, tell me I have no idea what I'm talking about. Tell me about how great the con the directory content is. Talk to me about great con directory content because that stuff ranks. It ranks. It has and and I've been and why saying is it for ranking? Years. Is it ranking because of content? I I knew. Um, I've been saying Why for is it years that Google is going to deprecate directory listings because the content is so bad. It is, at best, a copy and pasted resume, and it's it's they're awful. You guys know this. I don't need to explain this to you. And yet, Guy's right. They're 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 ranking. The other thing that I've seen Guy to to prove the death of links is you'll get someone who will do an analysis of a, of a result and they will then do like an Ahrefs domain rank review of each of those results. And they'll talk about how the top ranking one is not the highest domain rank. Guy, can you explain to our dear listener why they should not do that, nor listen to people who do that? Because they're they're and judiciously, they're totally missing the point. Um, more likely, uh, there's some kind of they have some kind of incentive to tell you that information. But again, I, we talked about this on Joy's podcast. Talk about I talked about it with Seth. Not all links are created equally. It's not a lump. It's not my get the most links game. It's a you can get a, in my experience, what I tell people, get a highly relevant, either topically or geographically relevant link. I don't care what the, the third party tools report on the quality of the domain. If that local link is from a real business and it's topically related to your practice, and uh, obviously if it's even better if it's both geographically and topically relevant to your practice, those types of links tend to impact 
your visibility, not, and you don't have to have a, a sheer number of them. It's not about like just raw numbers, but those work. And, and again, that's, that's kind of my view of it, but I will tell you, even if you don't take that specific, you're like eye rolling your eyes, there are people that are growing big link profiles that are ranking on sites that are, um, you know, less than relevant. And so again, my point is, is like, yeah, look, many of those links might not be doing anything, but some of them are moving the dial a lot. And we also have the example of go look at, go take any local pack in any major practice area in any major city, look at the top share of voice, local share of voice leaders and go run backlink analysis on them, analyses on them. You will see with some exceptions because of some people that have really done a great job of reviews and business and keywords in the business name. Most of them will have a very competitive number of linking root domains. So where I thought you were going to go with this. Okay. And when you said analysis and then you said linking root domains, you get more specific on this. Yeah. yeah. Those tools are so bad. Oh yeah. Don't let's so, not should we even waste our time talking about the tool metrics? No, I mean tool- we have to waste our time because people use this to make what they believe is a well informed assessment. Those okay. the the, the so you want to beat up the tool metrics. I do because I keep hearing right. them. Okay. And I don't think the, the audience knows this. I really genuinely don't. It, okay. So let's just say it. The tools the tool are, metrics. Go ahead. The, the, they're always zero to one hundred schools. Domain rank, domain authority, whatever you want to talk about it. And people sell links based on the domain rank that they've been able to develop. That is not a Google metric. Those are very, it is, it is the best approximation that someone has been able to make about the quality of a link. And it's a really, really ill-informed poor score, which very specifically does not take into account the location. That is one element that is not taken into account at all. And so when Google's, when Guy is talking about Google ranking uh, the local packs, the driver are those localized links. You don't get the lo- location of those links tied up into the domain rank or, or domain authority, those, those 0 to 100 numbers. It is a terrible, terrible metric. So when you hear people definitively talking about their assessment of things based on what is a really, really bad and inaccurate metric, I'm not saying we don't use it. You just need to understand the context. I wouldn't be betting my SEO future on anything that is based around any of those third-party tools. Sorry. I didn't mean to be mean to them, but I just feel like people tend to look at this as, oh, we want to go from a 37 to a 38. We're winning SEO now, Guy. Well, yeah. And, and again, the, the, the issue, I don't, I don't even, I'm not even trying to cast a, sp- the tools are doing what the tools are doing. And most of the major tools are pretty transparent about the limitations of the metrics. They, you know, they tell you what, how they're if calculating. If you read them. it, but like the, the, like, yeah, the, that's not my problem. I mean, just, I'm sorry. You gotta be a little I'm... bit more, you gotta listen a little bit more closely. Um, anyway, um, yeah, all the tool metrics you can especially, but, but again, none of them are designed. No, the tools are designed on very rudimentary links in, links out, old school kind of page rank analysis, right? Page rank. But everybody knows that the links are not equal. They're not the same. And so when you get a site that's got, you know, uh, millions of linking root domains and high DA and DR and all this stuff, that has nothing to do with it's going to uh, help you rank in the local pack. Look at Forbes. Forbes is a great example. Forbes, they got all sorts of links, right? It's Forbes.com. They got all sorts of links. And they do rank for Everything. personal injury. Yeah, a lot of things. How to cut first your of all, grass. You're never going to be Forbes, first of all. Uh, secondly, though, guess what? Forbes doesn't rank until they figure out a scheme to put Google business profiles. They don't rank in the local pack. And so uh, that's my point, though. You're not competing with Forbes in those, in all of those local contexts. And so, um, thinking that you're going to, that building a link profile that has a bunch of sites like Forbes. And by the way, these, the ones that are the easiest to, to, to devalue are the ones that everybody can get from the emails on high domain authority. Those aren't the links that, why, if you're Google and you know that that's going on, aren't you going to try everything you can with your fancy math to make those links not count? Yes, you are. So anyway, 
Um, Summarize. Links matter. Links matter is my and, summary. But to take to take that the the contrapositive of what of what you just said is the harder the link is to get, probably the more valuable it is because everyone else doesn't have it. And that's my that's a, that's how I view all this stuff. It's like do what do what people other people can't do. That's where it's how why economics. wouldn't that be the thing, right? Yeah, and that's how you stand out in a competitive, crowded, underhanded, dirty, buy my followers, buy my links, buy my reviews market like legal. And again, it d- does a lot of that stuff still work? Sure. Until it doesn't. Well, unfortunately, dear listener, we must wrap this link conversation up because we're out of time. Thank you so much for listening. We do appreciate it. If you just landed here, hit that subscribe button and uh, join us for office hours. Conrad is going to read uh, user submitted fake reviews, and we're going to expose nasty backlinks during our office hours, which will be on what day, Conrad? It is on the 17th, May 17th. So if you can't go more than two weeks without listening to me and Guy, you can catch us live on the 17th. LinkedIn and YouTube are your destinations for that. I will tell you the last time we got together and talked about this, Guy got, a, Guy got pretty animated and he was naming names, which I have failed to get him to do on the pod, but uh, it was a good one. So join Put us. our expertise to work for your firm. There's our ad. By torching your competitors in real time. If you can't think of something to suggest, you can send <laughs> something to Guy that's like, hey, Guy, does it look like these reviews are fake? What do you think? It's the never-ending wrap-up. The never-ending wrap-up. Do you know what some movie that song's from? I have no idea. I well, love, love when you sing to me, though. Hashtag it. All right, we're out of here. Money makes a money makes a It makes a world go round. Money makes a world go round. Yeah, money makes a world go round. Money makes a world go round. Yeah, money make a world go